eight seemingly harmless habits that can ruin both parents' and kids' lives. Parents, of course, do their best raising their kids, but nobody's perfect. And there are some things, however minor they might seem, that parents do every day that can cause some pretty serious psychological damage, not only to their kids, but to themselves as well. So let's take a look at eight of these mentally destructive habits. Before we do that, take a moment to subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications to keep up with all our updates. Number eight, constant rush. One of the main features of adult life is that there's never enough time in the day to get everything done. Yeah, multiply that by 10 for those who have children. Getting the kids up and dressed, having breakfast and school lunches ready, checking that books and homework are in backpacks, getting them to school on time, that's a typical morning for busy parents. And the hectic schedule doesn't end there, of course. There are after-school activities and your own personal errands to run before then. And to top it off, it's all accompanied by stressed out grumbling. Hurry up, we're gonna be late, watch where you're going. But guess what? This hurried panic isn't just reserved for parents. It also gets passed on to the kids. And nobody needs that kind of negativity in their life no matter what their age. In fact, a study at the University of Mary Washington has shown that this constant rush often has negative outcomes for mental health, including anxiety and depression. So delegate what errands you can to someone else or postpone them till the weekend when you can leave the kids with their grandparents or a babysitter. Number seven, force feeding. Going off that last point, parents in rush mode barely have time to even feed themselves. But when it comes to feeding the kids, most parents make an effort to prepare a nice balanced meal. So while the child has had a plate full of Brussels sprouts set in front of them, Mom or dad might be hurriedly wolfing down a Pop-Tart or off doing household chores or both at the same time. In a child's mind, they might think, well, I don't want icky vegetables. I want a Pop-Tart too. Why do I have to eat this? So children often refuse to eat what's been given to them. In her book, French Children Don't Throw Food, parenting expert Pamela Druckerman says that your child won't ever throw tantrums like this if the whole family gathers at the table. This time will be an excellent occasion for communication and will set the right example for little ones. Plus, mom and dad need a healthy, balanced diet too. Number six, not setting boundaries. Imagine you're on the phone and your child asks you a question, which you immediately answer. The next time you're on the phone, they want your attention again, but this time you shush them and tell them to go somewhere else and play. So where's the logic here? Children need structure and stability, and this type of flip-flopping, depending on the situation, definitely doesn't provide that. Dr. Robert Myers, a licensed child and adolescent psychologist, explains that kids get used to the fact that you instantly respond to their every cry and need within the first year of their lives. If you don't want your kid bothering you when you have an important call, then set a boundary or constant rule for this. First, explain to them why you'll no longer do it so that the sudden change doesn't confuse them and find a good activity for them during your phone conversation, whether it be a box of crayons, some puzzles, or a book. Warn them before you get on the phone that you'll be unavailable for a certain amount of time and stick to your word. And remember, always let a child finish their thought when you're ready to listen. Number five, inducing panic and fear. Surely you remember that panicked feeling you used to have when your mom or dad headed off to a parent-teacher conference where they discuss your grades and behavior. Or that moment you lost or broke something new and expensive and the debilitating fear that struck you, knowing that your mom would find out. You certainly didn't like feeling that way when you were a kid, so why would you want your child to? As a parent, you can prevent this panic and fear in your little one if you approach a situation with positivity. Instead of screaming at your kid over something as petty as a lost or broken toy, help them find or fix it. If they're struggling in school, sit down and work together on improving those grades. Don't make your kids wait for your reaction in despair. Instead, let them mess up a bit and help them understand what they can do to fix what they've done and avoid those mistakes next time. Dr. Carl Pickhart, a psychologist and author of 15 parenting books, suggests looking at mess-ups as a chance to teach kids not to fear failure. Number four, self-criticism. You are your child's role model. 
When they grow up, they want to be just like you, and that's a beautiful thing. But it's also a big responsibility on your part to set a good example for them. So if you constantly call yourself fat or ugly or stupid or whatever bad names you tend to assign yourself, your child will think that this sort of self-loathing is totally normal and okay. But it's not. You should learn to love yourself so that your child will do the same. Dr. Rachel Bussman, a clinical psychologist at the Child Mind Institute, explains that we shouldn't underestimate the power of self-talk. It can be pretty destructive, and the task of a good parent is to turn it the other way around. Don't ignore the child's sad thoughts or negative feelings about themselves. Talk it all out. Don't promise them an unrealistically bright outcome for every problem, but share stories of how you managed to cope with similar issues you've had. Don't set impossible standards for yourself, and your kids will follow in your footsteps. Number three, comparing your kids to others. Why can't you be more like, insert other child's name here? Now remember yourself as a kid and answer this question honestly. Did hearing such phrases from your parents ever help you in any way? Did it inspire you to sign up for music lessons or some extracurriculars? No and no. Your kids feel the same way. Dr. Sherry Campbell, a clinical psychologist with over 25 years of clinical training and experience, explains that every child is an individual person and should be treated as such. Comparing your kid to their siblings, peers, and even themselves in the past suppresses their talents, distances them from you, and lowers their self-esteem. Compassion works much better than comparison, so praise their strengths, tell them you'll be there for them no matter what, and set realistic goals together. Two, fear of disapproval. You know who doesn't care about the opinions of others? Self-reliant and self-confident people. Do you think that a child can grow into such an adult in a family where he's forced to wear some ugly but probably extremely worn hand-knit sweater not to offend grandma? Or to eat something he hates just because it's impolite to say no? According to clinical psychologist Dr. Linda Tillman, people pleasers rely on approval from others so heavily that they need it to feel secure and confident. They're so afraid of being outcast from some social groups that they sacrifice their individuality. Teach your kids to always tell the truth and not to put everyone else before themselves. It's okay and even necessary to say no if something's really important to you. Number one, neglecting family. Eventually your children will grow up and start families of their own. And when that happens, do you think that's it for your relationship with them? That you'll no longer see them or maybe once in a blue moon if you're lucky? Of course you don't want that, who would? But think about this. When was the last time you invited your parents or in-laws over for a visit? Remember, everything you do sets an example for your kids. This also has to do with how much attention you and your kids pay to each other. Unfortunately, gadgets steal a lot of quality time away from families nowadays. A recent study at Illinois State University analyzed 170 couples with young children. It found that children have more behavioral problems if their families spend a lot of time on their gadgets, and interrupt or even avoid family conversations in order to spend more time staring at a screen. Now that's sad, isn't it? Which of these habits do you find the most destructive? Tell us in the comments below. Share this video with your friends and remember to hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel. You'll love it over on the bright side.